Meeting started, and we'll call to order a specially called meeting of the Metropolitan Planning Commission of April 19th, 2018. Uh, I want to welcome everyone, and just so you know, while it's not amplified in the room, commissioners, uh, if you just talk, uh, it will it will pick it up, pick up your voice uh, on the video. So you don't have to talk into the microphone, but talk loud enough to make sure that everybody can hear you. Um, so today. Uh, your agenda is in front of you, so we'll have to have a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. It's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. The agenda is adopted. Now we are on to recognition of council members, and I did not see any council members. And so now we're on item D, uh, which is going to be item number one, the capital improvement budget. Greg? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, Greg Claxton with the Planning Department. I'll be presenting the FY 2018-19 to to FY 2023-24 to capital improvements budget. Um, before I get into my presentation, and I do want to let you know we have distributed um, some uh, additional uh, amendments to the CIB. Um, these were a couple little cleanup items that departments noticed after we distributed the, the, the CIB and posted it online. And this is the handout, Greg, right? right? Yes, that's okay. the handout. Um, so as a reminder to the background for the capital improvements budget, uh, the charter requires that the Planning Commission recommend a prioritized list of capital improvements to the mayor and Metro Council each year. Um, a capital improvement is any building, structure, work, or, or improvement with a life over 10 years and a cost greater than $50,000. Um, the way the CIB typically works is any capital improvement that Metro makes must be included in the CIB. However, the CIB does not guarantee funding uh, for a project. It only lays out what Metro could spend money on uh, in the following year. The CIB includes six years of projects, but is only binding on the first year because it's readopted every year. Uh, the commission's role, uh, the, in the, where the charter describes the, the process for the CIB, it notes that uh, the CIB should be accompanied by the report and recommendations of the Metropolitan Planning Commission. Um, it doesn't give uh, much detail in terms of the, the substance of what those recommendations should uh, apply to. However, we noted a, a few uh, related powers and responsibilities of the Planning Commission um, that have guided us in terms of how we think about uh, the Planning Department and the Planning Commission's roles. Uh, they are make the general plan for the physical development of the metropolitan government area, adopt a zoning plan, and make plans for replanning, conservation improvements, and re renewal of neighborhoods. Um, our understanding of the, the CIB is that it's focused on the physical development of the city and how uh, infrastructure improvements are, are interrelated to one another. Uh, once the capital improvements budget is adopted, there needs to be uh, some further council action that actually allocates funding. Uh, the highest profile one of these are general obligation bonds, usually conveyed from the mayor uh, to the council through a capital spending plan and then adopted through a, a bond resolution. Um, in addition, though, there are revenue bonds, primarily for water services and the sports authority. Um, these are usually passed um, not every year, but every few years. 4% uh, funds, primarily for equipment and office upgrades, uh, enterprise funds or operating budget, and the uh, federal or state funding. Um, in our uh, meetings with the commissioners over the past uh, week and a half, um, we one of the requests that we got was to put the current spending recommendations in, past, in uh, context of past spending levels. So what we've shown here are uh, the amounts for past capital spending plans going back to uh, FY 2008 and highlighted in green kind of the lower level of spending uh, that, that we saw uh, after the recession and then in blue the higher uh, level in kind of the more boom years. Uh, these are the two lines that we show when we break down uh, the commission's recommendations uh, by um, kind of funding amount request by year. Um, that's how we provide a little bit of context of you know what's a reasonable number of projects to recommend. Um, so I'm going to walk through how the, uh, uh, this year's CIB is organized. Most of, for the most part, it's consistent with uh, the last two years. Um, the document itself has a general introduction that tries to summarize the, the uh, contents of the CIB and the projects that are requested. Section 1 has projects funded by the Urban Services District. Uh, section 2 has projects funded by the General Services District. And then Section 3 has a more detailed listing for each project. 
Um, across the six years of the CIB, we have requests for $7.6 billion in spending across 539 projects. Uh, these include major ongoing programs as well as uh, some very detailed individual projects. You can still see we, uh, the bulk of spending or the the greatest year of spending is still uh, the first fiscal year, FY19, um, and then you drop off to a more consistent level for FY20 to 24. Uh, summary of uh, project request, funding request by uh, funding method. Again, you can see uh, proposed geo bonds are the, the most requested uh, type of funding, followed by revenue bonds, and federal, uh, fun federal funds, proposed 4% funds, and so on. Um, to organize the CIB, to make it a little bit more understandable, put some more projects together, uh, we organized, we, we organized uh, departments into similar groups. Uh, schools and public works uh, are on their own, uh, in, in their own section. Uh, the other ones that we've identified are enterprises, transit development and culture, facilities and technology and safety. Um, I want to highlight that the enterprises group is new this year. Uh, in the past two years, we've had water services as, as a standalone uh, group. Um, we've shifted over some uh, departments that act like, you know, at least conceptually, or business -like, have business-like activities, such as the municipal auditorium or the farmer's market, and group them all under enterprises, um, that where at least conceptually, they have a bottom line that, that you, know, you can use to help make sense of their project requests. Um, in the uh, section three of the CIB project details, uh, most projects are conveyed in one of these two formats. The one at the top is sort of a, a more fully uh, detailed request for projects that are assessed against the general plan. Uh, we have a simplified version of this uh, on the bottom for projects that are outside the scope of the general plan. Um, in the more detailed set, uh, we convey the project ID, a status, it's resubmitted, uh, not started, resubmitted in progress or new, the type of project it is, a capital asset, a, an overarching program, asset uh, uh, preservation, um, a capital priority group. These are clusters identified by the, uh, the mayor that departments sort of select projects into, T title and description, and if there's a different department that actually implements the request, that would be noted here as well. Then we have a section on priority information in the middle. This is where uh, the Planning Commission's recommendation, uh, either its priority level and any further uh, comment is included, as well as the departments, uh, how they identify the priority for the project, and then council priority and the council districts. Uh, council priority, this is a new format this year based on their new ap approach for uh, managing their requests. Uh, council considered a range of requests this year and identified priorities one through 161 uh, for projects within, uh, across their districts. Um, not all projects have a, a priority like that, but where it is, that's where we include it. Then we have the cost information, project cost, the total amount, and then by year, by year shown in the thousands. Uh, we also show for the first time this year, we try to identify the phase of the project, and we've asked departments to break out their request by what's the next phase needed, either a plan or study, land or right of way, or build and purchase. Uh, we also show the tax district, whether it's funded by the GSD or the USD, and if there's any impact to the, to the operating budget. And then last, uh, on the either side, we show uh, our assessment information, uh, how projects align with the National Next Guiding Principles, the Growth and Preservation Concept Map, and a set of efficient government criteria that we track. Um, we had a request to delve into one of the National Next criteria that we look at. So as a reminder, these are the seven guiding principles, plus whether or not a project supports centers and corridors. These go, this is what goes into the, the National Next ranking that we show, high, medium, and low. Um, and then each one of the seven principles is broken down into more specific criteria. Uh, I'm going to delve into the ensure opportunity for all guiding principle with reducing disparities, um, the criteria for that. <coughs> Um, for this one, we look at it in two ways. These are two different routes you can get to some number of points on this criteria. Uh, the first is uh, some projects are what we consider targeted services. These are projects that specifically serve a disadvantaged community, in which case they would receive 10 points, uh, or that derive from a master plan that included equity measures. Uh, that would give you five points. And so as an example, uh, the Harris Hillman School, which is a, a school for uh, students with special needs, receives 10 points, Head Start Centers, a targeted service receives 10 points, uh, the Walking Bike Master Plan considered equity measures in developing their priority uh, rate, rating system, that would receive five points. 
The other way that we look is projects that aren't intrinsically serving a uh, disadvantaged community. Uh, we look at the demographics in the service area for the project. Uh, we consider eight demographic factors. Uh, these are all rooted, rooted in census data that we track at the block group level. Um, residents that are a non-Hispanic minority, Hispanic, people with disabilities, or seniors. And then households with limiting, limited English speakers that are households that are below poverty, without a car, or single uh, mothers. Um, we add up the percentage of each one of those characteristics in each block group. Uh, this is kind of the map of how those lay out throughout the county. And essentially what we do is for any project whose service area uh, is above the median value for the county, that would be these areas, uh, we then assign points uh, from five to 10. If they're right at the median, they would get five. If they're the highest concentration project, uh, they would get 10 points. Uh, for our recommendations this year, as you'll recall, uh, we have a series of sort of tiers of recommendations. Um, I'm gonna go through each one of these in a little bit more detail, but I did wanna highlight that one of them, not scored, um, isn't used right now. Um, that's something that we could use if uh, we feel projects that are, are, are submitted without sufficient information for us to score. Um, in practice, the way that uh, these, this has been used is projects that are added after the planning acts are identified with an N rating. Um, so for our uh, first set of uh, rankings, we have A, recommend as planned. Uh, there's a number of different kinds of projects that go into here. Um, generally, we, we, intend, we uh, use this to convey projects that are a, of a high priority um, and that the Planning Commission recommends a project be pursued um, without necessarily recommending a level of funding. Um, so the first uh, set of projects that are included in here are projects whose funding is already secured. Um, primarily these are uh, water projects that rely on revenue bonds, as well as uh, Arts Commission projects funded through the 1% for Arts Fund. Our second set of projects are what uh, we've started labeling as core maintenance needs. This is our paving program, traffic, bridges, stormwater, fire department maintenance, libraries maintenance, parks maintenance, and general services maintenance. And then last, we have uh, what, what we've described as Nashville Next Priorities, uh, things that um, either through some project-specific factor, they're ranking on uh, the Nashville Next Assessment, um, or some other factor make these, we feel, recommendable for this year. And as we went through with uh, each one of you one-on-one, -on -one, we've got a number of projects in the Southeast, a few self-supporting projects, uh, livability projects in Madison and Donaldson, parks and greenways, primarily projects that are leveraging outside funding, a small number of school renovations and additions, and the sidewalks and bikeway programs. Uh, the second level of recommendation is, rec is B, recommend as planned if funding is available. Uh, these are projects that are aligned with Nashville Next, um, but they, they didn't rise to the same level as pri a priority as the other, as the, the A projects. Um, most projects in the CIB are, are identified as B. That's about 514 of 690 projects total. Uh, for the first time this year, we're also using C, recommend further work. Um, here we've identified uh, three projects, um, all of which are requested in the out years, not FY19, uh, from Muni Municipal Auditorium, where we're recommending uh, that the, the auditorium develop a business plan and estimate a return on investment for these three. Um, next, we have a set of projects that we uh, identify as D, non-general plan projects. Um, what we do, we, these are things that uh, seem to fall outside of the scope of the Planning Commission's expertise um, and other responsibilities. Um, generally what we're looking for when we identify projects as, in, in this category are projects that are, are fleet or equipment purchases, IT projects, retrofitting office space, and contingency funding. Um, in some cases it's, um, there's a little bit of a gray line between what counts as a general plan project and what counts as a non-general plan project. Generally, what we try to do um, is understand the Planning Commission's role in terms of managing land use regula regulations and how that affects our growth patterns throughout the county, and then coordinating other public investments, such as uh, infrastructure investments where you want to pave a road and uh, repair a water line. You wanna you know, kind of manage those to get them lined up and ordered correctly, um, or acquisitions of land or, or how we use metro land. Um, I highlight this because it's been a, a point of discussion and we kind of wanted to, to, to prepare everyone um, to, to, to delve into this one a little bit. Um, and then last, uh, we have, we do identify some projects over the years as not conforming to the general plan. These are our X recommendations. Here the recommendation is not to fund the project until the project and the plan align. 
This year we have one project in this category, uh, widen Bell Road from Blackwood Drive to Smith Springs Road. The request is, widen it, is to widen it from two lanes to four lanes. The major and collector street plan identifies it for three lanes. Our recommendation is to modify the project uh, to reflect the major and collector street plan. Um, for projects that are requesting funding sources other than geo bonds, this is how uh, the draft recommendations lay out by uh, volume of, of funds requested in <coughs> year. Uh, you can see there are a large number of A projects here that's primarily ref reflecting the water revenue bonds. And then these are the recommendations for proposed geo bonds. Uh, You'll see the in FY19, the A recommended projects come out to about that aver average level of spending for FY2008 to 2011. That's if those projects are fully funded, which is not necessarily going to be the case. Um, and then our recommendation is to submit the FY2018 to, to 2019 capital improvements budget for consideration by the mayor uh, with the amend amendments <coughs> provided. And I can take questions now. Thank you, Greg. Um, and before we open the item for public hearing, uh, I do want to say thank you uh, to you, Greg, and also Elham Daha, and then George Rooker, who's also helped with this particular proposal. I think we should give them a round of applause. <laughs> a lot of work, and I know the commissioners, you've talked to them in the last few weeks, and so we appreciate all the hard work that you've done. So we'll open this item for public hearing. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak in support? You want to speak? Come on up, Tom. Come on up. Welcome. Two minutes. <laughs> I'm Tom Sharp from the Metro Health Department. I just wanted to thank Greg. I know they put a lot of work into this. Uh, and to thank you guys for, I hope, putting the Woodbine Replacement Building in the A recommendations um, for whatever that's worth. And I hope it's worth something. Um, that's a really valuable thing. It's a really needed thing, and we really do appreciate the support from the staff and from you guys. So thank you very much for that. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate you coming down. Anyone else? Scott, you want to say anything? Are you good? We're good, thank you. Okay. Any other departments? Make sure we get it. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed. Commissioners, you want to start? Vice Chair, yeah. I'm going to start. <laughs> uh, well, I have not read this from cover to cover. Um, but as Greg just said, I do want to commend the staff because I know that this has been a tremendous undertaking and it's been a multi-year undertaking. And I know a lot of the um, changes that have been made, they may appear sort of like tweaks along the way, but I know that it recommends, uh, it represents sort of a sea change from how things were done prior to Nashville Next. And um, really like the way we're aligning this with Nashville Next. It's kind of keeping Nashville Next as a living document. Um, definitely appreciate the uh, way each project is scored relative to the Nashville Next pri um, priorities. Um, I, for one, did not even know we were doing the opportunity for all until a couple months ago. And I really appreciate that. Um, it's, it's a vast undertaking. I know that we have a long ways to go from here in terms of what actually gets funded. Um, but I hope <coughs> the recommendations are taken seriously by our council members. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of work went into figuring out what we wanted Nashville next to be, what we wanted to grow, how we wanted our city to grow. And obviously the capital improvement budget is key to implementing that vision. And so, um, you know, I just applaud you for putting this all together, and I hope that it will be a document that goes forward as council debates this, as the mayor debates it and council debates it, um, to really make an informed assessment of where we need to be investing our resources. So that's it. I do not have any very specific <laughs> comments. Yeah. Commissioner Tibbs? Everything she said. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, the one that, um, is, that didn't, um, the widening of Bell Road, mm -hmm. do you mind explaining uh, that one more time about sure. um, just the, the evaluation process for that and sure. what your recommendation is, if any? Sure. So um, it, essentially this was a, a council member request from this past fall. Um, at that time, you know, we, we reviewed all of the council member requests. 
uh, road, road projects in particular. We compare against the major and collector street plan. Uh, we work with Michael Briggs and our transportation team as well as Public Works to review sort of the current status there, ongoing development patterns, um, and see if there's anything that uh, comes out as warranting uh, a change in the major and collector street plan. Um, when we went through this process for last year's CIB, we had a, a larger number of projects that uh, were in that X category. And in some cases, we recommend remove, removing projects. In some cases, we re recommended modifying projects. And in two cases, we, we did recommend changing the MCSP. Um, when Nashville Next was brought back around to the Planning Commission for uh, adopting amendments to it and updates, those changes to the MCSP were made. So we, we do go through a process of trying to determine, you know, how are conditions changing? Is there anything that's, that warrants a change in the MCSP? And I think uh, the pro this project this year, um, I think our, our team did not see anything that warranted that change. I think primarily the concerns that we've heard are that traffic backs up um, on a, the two-lane road when people need to turn. And so that seems in line with the MCSP's recommendation for a, a three-lane standard. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Bichette. I was kind of hoping to listen to the other commissioners who have already been through this once. Okay, we'll come back first. to you. About okay, that would be great. That would okay. be great. All right, Commissioner Moore. I have to echo that. Echo that. that. All right. Commissioner <laughs> Gobble. Um, on the public, on the, you mentioned this, the street widening, that sort of thing. We get in front of this commission almost with every subdivision request, we get traffic as an issue. How this one was, Bell Road was initiated by the councilman. Do most of these come through public works? Are they the ones that saying that this is where the priorities are in their perspective? Um, traditionally, public works does not provide the specific projects that they would like to pursue as part of their request. They request an overall program amount um, and have not usually provided, except for a few very high profile projects, they don't usually identify specific projects within that. Um, usually if you see a specific road project or sidewalk project in the CIB, it's there from a council member request. Um, this year, um, we work with Public Works and have included in their, their road reconstruction program um, and a, an identification of the projects they would like to pursue if fully funded in year one. Um, so we, we're going to continue working with them to, to bring a longer sense of their priorities sort of long term um, into the CIB. So as we're getting these requests in certain areas of town, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of growth, mm -hmm. <clears throat> from our perspective as a knowing that there's quite a bit of growth going to happen in mm -hmm. that community, are we proactively in a position to let them know what's coming, <laughs> I guess, or how, that, how does that work? Um, I, I, that is an active topic of conversation for us to sort of determine how do we match the concerns from sort of as development goes on, <coughs> particularly <coughs> roadway and transportation issues. How do we get that incorporated into the CIB and the, and the prioritization process? Um, I would say we are not yet at the point where you could, you could rely on the CIB to say transportation projects will occur in your area or no, they won't. It's, it, we haven't been able to sort of pull everything together yet enough for that. Um, but that is, that is a high priority for us to determine. Um, and that's a cross-division team that we have between my group in capital planning, the transportation team, land development, and design studio, or design, community design. And the flip side to that would be the idea of ultimately incorporating some of those improvements into the staff report so that, as, right? I mean, in, in a perfect world, we would, <coughs> so we we would say we, we see these improvements are coming. I don't, I think we're still working out exactly how that looks, yeah. but, but it's certainly to have a stronger linkage between kind of the, the work that y'all do throughout the year um, and the, the CIB, for sure. I mean, we're still looking at 
each project when it comes in for a rezoning for, or for a subdivision, we're working with public works on traffic studies and we're trying to look at how those studies are done too so that they look a little bit more regionally on large projects out in suburban areas and so they're not just focused on turn lanes into the project site but that they do an analysis of the overall area so that we know what improvements might be needed based on that project's impact and based on the background traffic from other projects that have been approved already in that area. So we are working more closely with public works to try to fine tune how we do traffic studies. And, and the CIB really focuses on Nashville next priorities of centers and corridors. And I mean, there are instances where, where we would look at maybe local road having more connectivity mm -hmm. But g generally, it's focused on the centers and corridor infrastructure to, to support those policies. Right. And that, that's a conversation we've entered into with uh, community design with the, the recent uh, Haynes Trinity uh, study to sort of see how would we incorporate kind of the recommended new collector street into the CIB, you know, kind of getting the, the network of streets that that envisions. Um, I would also add that the recommended project for a transportation study for Southeast Nashville is also intended to, to help uh, manage that, like uh, get a better understanding of the priority road network down there, um, as well as how we can incorporate an overarching study's recommendations into development as it comes in bit by bit. We're hoping that serves as a, as a model for other parts of the county. It's funded. <clears throat> Uh, thanks. I, I do want to compliment the staff. This is an overwhelming task. I think we're it's, we're going through an evolution with it. This is certainly taking a step up from last year, and last year was good. So um, I'm very complimentary of the work. And got no reason to disagree with anything I put in. Here. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Sims. Um, I want to echo what everybody else has said. This is unbelievable work. Um, this is my second year, but I have to admit this is overwhelming. <clears throat> and I think the only thing I can legitimately add to any of this is just to make sure that not that every decision is correct, but that the methodology is correct and that you're using the best we know of that. Mm -hmm. I think this is the second year of a city-funded grant to explore this kind of new budgeting process. Am I correct? Um, our, the capital planning team, uh, myself and Elham, were, was originally um, established through a public investment plan, the PIP <coughs> process. Yeah. Um, the PIP after process. the, yeah, uh, which is, is not a grant, but it, it had an uncertain long-term commitment. Um, after the first year, finance, finance shifted us out from a PIP to just a regular staff position. Okay. Okay. And it is a requirement of the, the charter that we do this, so that right. is why it's a permanent function of the department. This is just a methodology that is quite complex, um, and very few cities undertake it. I think those that do end up loving it, and I'm really glad we're doing it. I think there's been some discussion, though, among the council people themselves mm -hmm. as to whether they like this or not. Mm -hmm. And how much they actually use it? Has there mm -hmm. been any type of gap analysis in terms of what would it take for the city as a whole for us to truly adopt this type of method for budgeting? Because I think it's, <coughs> the cities that have done research on this show that it's a very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know that there's been any any discussion of broadening this approach. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I as you you've noted, it is. Um, there's some disagreement on council as to, to, to sort of how to incorporate it. Well, anything that I can do just as a member, I would love to help you guys because, again, the research shows that the cities that have gone through the pain of birthing this <laughs> have grown a healthy child, so I'm really hopeful to do this. The other thing I'd like to just say is that um, I think this is such a good way for us to align the many complexities of public policy. I mean, you've got strategic planning going on, you've got National Next going on, every department has its own internal workings. And I don't know how else we would do this if we didn't have some type of tool that helped us make decisions based on priorities mm -hmm. like this. So again, my compliments to you guys. And rather than try to give my feedback on any one to topic, <laughs> I just want to make sure that we, one, compliment the staff and the quality of the staff, and the second is to keep urging you to please keep pushing on this kind of method. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner. So Thanks. as the longest tenured planning commissioner, <laughs> um, this is an incredible improvement. And in the old days, it was just a rubber stamp, and we weren't really expected to review this. 
And so this is now a tool that we can use to approve this very important budget, but hopefully that other departments can use as well. So I have one question and then a couple of quick comments. Um, much like the state with their rainy day fund, does the city have a rainy day fund that during these healthy good times we are contributing to, to provide for slush funds in years like 08 and 09? Um, that I actually do not know. Um, that's because kind of our role is focused on uh, checking alignment with Nashville Next and prioritizing overall. There's a a pretty there's a, a distinct gulf between us and finance in terms of okay. the actual financing piece. Um, so it's not something where we we delve too much into into that piece of it. Well, when, when we're looking at capital spending in years out, mm -hmm. three, four, five years, we know we're going to have some type of correction. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that would be a question for us to answer. Then a couple other points which we brought up in our meeting. One, we need to always balance life cycle costing and upfront costing as we look at this so we can make sure we're distilling that to the department heads um, and not necessarily taking the cheapest, least expensive alternative but looking at life cycle costing. Two, it would be helpful next year to have a sort of comprehensive review of the physical condition of assets uh, and begin to look at ages of roofs and parking lots and failing infrastructure that I know Scott has in his department to try to look at this holistically. <clears throat> and then three, if there's a way to sort of get finance to categorize commitments they've made mm -hmm. through economic development deals or other things that we can begin to track, mm -hmm. uh, that it's very difficult for us to know what they've made commitments to do. Other than that, I think this is the yeoman's job, and I, I commend the staff. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner <coughs> Michelle, you want to say anything? Yeah. Come back to you. I just, you know, I, it, it, it's really interesting, and I, I um, really learned a lot going through the whole thing. And I, I think I didn't, I didn't get to see really how it was done before, but from everything I've heard, I mean, this is just a really. <coughs> vast improvement so I just had questions about it so um, for example a whole bunch of things like um, and I'll get to the hospital question in a minute but um, for example how did you how are the populations of the um, minorities identified is that through census data mm -hmm. it is so that's static between censuses it's um, I'm sorry, it's based on the American Community Survey. Um, so it's the five-year average um, that get, drills down to the, the block group level. Um, so it is it is slightly out of date. It's not as out of date as the 2010 census, um, but it's also a fuzzier picture than the 2010 census. Okay, and um, also, how do we know, so the departments themselves, do they, and you, you sort of clarified this when we met, but do they understand this criteria for judging these projects and do they work towards meeting those? It, it varies. We haven't dug into uh, the specifics of the criteria with very many departments so far. Uh, that That's on our work plan for this year. Because that could really change mm -hmm. the project. Okay. And do they end up getting their grade? Uh, uh, have they this year seen what their um, projects are scored? The the draft the CIB has been di distributed to the departments. Yes, but and they we haven't we haven't yet provided, I except for the projects that were reviewed at the council um, this past October through December. Um, the departments haven't seen the, the details of their scoring for their projects this year. And so you haven't had, had time to have feedback from the departments about whether or not they feel that your scoring system matched how they felt about their project? Only, only intermittently, like only, only occasionally, right? But we haven't, we haven't sought that comprehensively yet. So um, one of the things I really, a uh, couple more questions. Mm -hmm. um, if transit passes or doesn't pass, how does that affect this budget? Um, so the narrow response is that if transit passes, there um, in the mayor CIB, there will need to be added projects that would implement the transit program. 
um, that's the narrow view. Um, in the long term, I think departments will need to sort of incorporate that in their, into their long-term work plans. Um, that will you know, sort of surface as the CIB is updated year to year. Um, I wouldn't anticipate, other than like the, the actual transit program itself, I wouldn't anticipate major changes this year. Um, if it doesn't pass, I think, you know, I, I think it's sort of revisiting of, you know, kind of what, what the next step is and seeing how the community conversation goes. Um, so looking at this whole scoring system, um, I'm kind of asking the same question Commissioner Sims did, I think, really, but how do we evaluate that it's working? <laughs> how do we know that you're scoring it in a way that the highest priority projects really have been identified and mm -hmm. and what do you think would be a good way to do that next year um i think we i think from the commission's level it could it could work to delve into just the scoring piece in a, a work session setting um, where we provide, I mean, you, you have the scoring details for, you know, a certain subset of high priority, high performing projects. Uh, we could delve into that and see kind of across projects, like across school projects or parks projects, which are the ones that seem to be strong performing and why. And I think at the end of the day, it's partly testing your intuition and partly checking for things that are surprising and see if in retrospect they make sense. Um, we were trying to keep this discussion sort of at a higher level, so we didn't get into every last detail of how we analyzed every project, but we, we can get into more detail in work sessions, To and I think we're open to ideas on how to come up with better ways to score or ways to track the outcome of the scoring. I mean, I think this is, we're still in year two of a complete overhaul of a really large and complicated process, so if there's other ways to do this, we're, we're still open to those those ideas on how to do that. Well, and this might be the best way. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole trick would just be to figure out if it truly is, maybe, by putting in some kind of control where you have maybe someone from another planning department from another city <laughs> score a sample of projects and see if they score it the same way. Somehow like that, so that you see a, the score is really, I mean, I'm a mm -hmm. neuroscientist, so we always have to have controls. <laughs> sure, so, and, and I, would, I would flag that there's two issues. One is, are we applying our, our scoring system consistently? Um, but the other is, is the scoring system capturing what's important? Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think we can certainly take a look at how we address both of those. But we're scoring relative to Nashville next. Mm -hmm we're not necessarily scoring relative to each and I mean we and we hope that the department's plans align or will ultimately eventually align with Nashville next but they don't necessarily nor do they necessarily these align with council priorities mm -hmm. so there's a lot of factors outside our control that would these may still always be the, the high performing ones relative to Nashville next but they may not come out as the high performing ones based on those other priorities, competing priorities. Ultimately, it's getting everyone to say Nashville Next is the guiding document that's going to, you know, drive us forward. But I don't think we're quite there. Yeah, we could never control for the political environment, nor is it yeah. our job to. That's another way to put it. <laughs> Can you share more questions? One more. One more. <laughs> um, it's just about the hospital. So I was really... Um, confused about why the hospital projects were all graded D. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't mind speaking to that. Sure. Uh, so in general, you know, um, what we're looking for are how projects interact with how the county grows, um, how we manage land uses, how the private market responds to public investments. Um, or how we need to coordinate different investments together. And so the general hospitals projects are all sort of about the building or interior to the building. Um, things like x-ray machines, a retrofitted kitchen, a retrofitted en entryway, neonatal units, these kinds of things that in our understanding right now don't connect to the other roles of the, the planning commission. 
Um, they don't have an impact on how the private market might, you know, uh, uh, prioritize investments in one area of the county or another. Uh, they don't really have overflow impacts other than just sort of site design issues, um, if, if they change the exterior at all. Um, they don't really need to be coordinated with um, other sets of in investments that we make, like a park or a road. Um, and so they, they seem like they're outside the scope. Now we can go through and score on the basis of the general hospital as a whole. I mean, it, it actually scores very well because it's serving a disadvantaged community, it's promoting health, um, there's offering services. I mean, there's, it, it will score reasonably well, but it, it won't give you much information in terms of um, are there any projects within these that should be recommended or not. Um, that seems like more of a responsibility for the general hospital staff. Um, and it doesn't connect to the Planning Commission's overall um, role. Now, it's a little bit of a gray area. We kind of strayed over that way with our recommendations on municipal auditorium, um, which we felt that that was appropriate because, because those are operating business-like activities. There's a simple bottom line that they're seeking to achieve, and we want to support them as they work towards that. Um, in this case, we don't see that as a similar simple bottom line issue um, for the general hospital. Um, I think if we were to say that the general hospital should be operated like a business, like a department, maximizing its bottom line, I think that would be a very contentious position for us to take. And I don't think that's what you're asking for, mm -hmm. but I'm just by point of comparison. Um, and so one of the things after our discussion we've been talking about internally is we can work a little bit more closely with them to sort of structure their request to follow best capital budgeting practices. Um, so they still lean very much into most of their spending is in one year. They haven't phased it out. Um, there's not a strong connection between um, what they identify. They don't identify different levels of priorities. They don't align their request to um, past their typical past spending amounts, which range between zero or one to five million dollars a year. Um, we can work with them on, on those sort of best practices. Um, I'm still not sure that there's a, a role for the Planning Commission to you know, kind of weigh in on the overall level of prioritization. But ultimately, that's the Planning Commission's decision. That's our reasoning so far. Well, thanks. I, I really appreciate all those clarifications, and I appreciate that you answered all my questions during the process. And um, thank you very much, and thank you very much, and thank you very much for all the hard work that you did on this. So uh, I try not to comment too much. Uh, yeah, Commissioner Moore. Yeah. Oh. That's OK. <laughs> Sorry, Commissioner Moore. Commissioner Moore. Um, I really don't have any more questions, but I do want to say, especially with this being my first year, thank you for laying this out and making it somewhat digestible <laughs> and not too scary. Um, and thank, <laughs> thank the rest of the staff. So, <laughs> so sorry, Commissioner. Uh, so I try not to comment too much, and just a few things um, that I, I see where we're going, which is a really great thing. And I think a couple of things that just this conversation and us getting back in line with what the Charter has asked us to do. Um, and that is, I think that it's helped the departments um, make a much more formal process within their own divisions. Some have done that really well in the past, but I think that this has helped them start to think and plan ahead some. Um, you know, I think also it's it's helped some of the departments communicate um, together a little more, not to say that the heads don't communicate. I know that they meet often. Um, and so I think that the process is becoming more formalized and it's it's um, becoming a, a regular thing. And so, you know, you can't um, fund something that's not in the CIB, which I think is important to note. And so um, the staff has done a good job. And the first question that I asked Greg was, how many council members are we going to make upset and how many citizens are we going to make upset? And so I think um, that the team has done a good job in minimizing that. I also think the second thing that this has done, um, it's, it's really helped the council think about planning and, and it's also, I think, helped them think about their districts <laughs> and also think about the, the city as a whole. So I think good things 
it's not perfect, but I do believe that it's a, a vast improvement, like Commissioner Haynes said, and the other commissioners. So I'm excited um, where we are. We, I, I believe, too, you know, we also have to think that this is a, a large undertaking from a, a staffing position. And so um, we've got to think about that moving forward. So any, anything else? Any other comments? We'll need a motion to approve, and let me make sure uh, the motion to approve will also include the three amendments that you handed out, correct? That's right. Which is um, the new Casey Branch Library, New Hadley Park Branch Library, and the East Bank Public Infrastructure. Is that correct? That is correct. So the motion will include those three projects um, as amended. Make a motion that we approve stack recommendation to approve the uh, CIB with these three as amendments. amended as amended second that's a proper motion and second any other discussion seeing none all in favor say aye aye opposed no ayes have it congratulations Greg thank you very job Greg. now we're on to item E other business historic zoning Nothing, Mr. Pitts. Okay. Parks, anything? No Mr. report. <laughs> no report. Executive committee. Um, very quickly, we are we are still moving forward with the search. Um, we are meeting uh, here at the end of April and going into um, May with um, five, I believe it's five candidates. Um, and we're going to bring the final two to three candidates to the commission, um, if that is the will of that um, uh, committee and so that is moving forward and I just wanted to give you all an update on that and so I if you have questions can I ask you a question yes, yes, um, yes have sir. we given any discussion or thought to delaying the final approval until we know who our next mayor is at least for the next year are we ready to just move <coughs> well you know that is something that I think um, we will have to decide as a commission. Okay. So what I would say is that uh, you know it is it, it would it would be my thought to um, you know this is y'all's ultimate decision, um, us as a commission together. So you need to think about that within your own hearts, and um, we also I believe need to look at all of the candidates candidly, mm -hmm. and if we feel comfortable with a particular candidate moving forward and the current process where we are with mayor. Um, but it will ultimately be a decision amongst this commission to, to make that determination. Um, you know, I, I think that we, um, this is just one person, uh, one commissioner uh, that we have, if we need to um, delay it or if you all think that we need to delay that, we have a, a really good team in place uh, with, with Bob and you know we can we can probably do that um, but if we feel comfortable moving forward with the candidates I would say you know in, in working I, I will tell you I've been working with the mayor's office and getting um, that feedback too mm -hmm. and I, I would encourage y'all to do do that as well okay. so I know that's kind of a not no, a that's good. concrete answer yeah. but you all need to think about that that was a political answer Thank you, Jeff. It was it was a good answer, and, and you know it was a balanced answer. <laughs> I hope. On the small committee, who's, who's... Um, well, if you so, uh, I I do have a list of the names. I just don't have them with okay. me. Okay. Um, but if you have questions or want to know that, um, call just call Shannon, okay. and and she will give you a list. I just don't have that okay. in front of me at this okay. meeting. And so I want to say thank you for everybody that has reached out to Shannon and given your input, and because of. Yeah, I mean, you all know this. I mean, I would love to that we could all get together and, and discuss, but we can't. So because of the sunshine law, so that is why we're handling it the way we did. I do um, know that the <clears throat> committee that met that, that Mr. Haynes was on, they took it very seriously uh, and narrowed it down to some good candidates. And so um, the uh, our our metro staff uh, from HR felt um, really good about that process, and I want to thank Jeff for taking valuable time out of his day to, to do that. Um, so we'll continue to move forward, and by the time we get it to the full commission with the two or three candidates, I mean, if, if you all don't feel comfortable, 
uh, and want to wait, we can do that. And so when, what was the date that you said we probably have uh, to So I think it's, I looked um, at my last email, uh, we will probably be done by the beginning of May, the okay. first couple weeks of May, and then we'll have it before us either in <coughs> May or going into June. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's, I think that our timeline, um, we've stayed pretty consistent, and I told y'all we would try to do this within four to six months, and we started this right after um, the first of the year. So I feel like our timeline has um, been moved along correctly. So we'll have interviews now with the last couple candidates? Or no, we can. You can ask just, um, I would say, the last several candidates, it, it, you can ask them any type of I, mean, I was just curious what the process is. Do we have to have a specially called meeting? Like, how do you we handle that? Yes, we'll have a specially called meeting. It probably won't be a normal committee meeting because a normal commission meeting because we have a lot of items that we need to do, and we don't want to go into midnight. No, no, right? No. <laughs> so we'll probably have to. We'll, we'll what we'll do is we'll try to figure out when y'all are available and figure out a time for a specially called meeting. Okay. And then, you know, we have to notice it and right. all of that. So same right. type of process. Okay. okay. And I may have mentioned this before, but I, just to keep our decisions from being bifurcated, it would be really nice to have an odd number. Yes. You had mentioned that before. Decisions on. We have an odd number going into the next thing, and I, I'm assuming that we'll, we'll have more than one. <laughs> It would take for us to get to two and we'd be divided. So. No, 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 I, I agree. Any other questions on that? Thank you, Vice Chair. Great question. Uh, and then the council member is not here. So the next item is uh, Bob, anything on just, any, any uh, announcements? We will continue to play musical chairs with our locations. I'll just keep reminding <laughs> of different locations. April 26th, we'll be back at the school board at 2601 Bransford Avenue. Uh, May 10th, we'll be at 936 East Trinity Lane at the East Police Precinct for our commission meeting. And May 24th, we will be back at the Howard Office Building in the Sunny West Conference Center. And then if there's a special election, um, and even, even if there's not, we may, since we have to send out notices early, we probably will be at a different location in June. Is there an election day? That is like it is, but they don't have they don't they don't have voting. They don't then? need the room on that day. But if there is a do early voting, not, if there's a runoff, I should say not a special election. If there's a runoff in sometime in June, then they probably will need that for that room for early voting. So we will likely pick a new location for our first meeting in June. Okay. And so one thing that I also wanted to say to think about was. I, I guess I would like to get feedback on if you like to have a special meeting for the CIB to deal with this individually or if you would like this back on a regular meeting and you don't have to give me an answer today but just something to think about for next year whether you like doing it this way or just include it on a, a regular meeting which could okay. be a, could be a long agenda but adding this we, we kind of felt like this needed special attention and so you wouldn't be considering it at midnight on a, a meeting where there was lots of items, but if you'd rather do it on a regular meeting, let, let us know. Okay. okay, that's good. Anything else? Motion to adjourn? So moved. Yeah. We're this has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.